Because you take your first, remember, it's always people to people. The person you take on, you've got this idea that you're going to be working with like a client. Yeah. No, you're working with specific person A who has all of these different problems and things. And now you're going to try and what you're going to try and do with them. So you have a general endpoint in mind. And what I teach is like break it down into milestones. So this is where you want to get them. Like let's say you want to get them releasing music on labels or you want to get them, um, you know, touring themselves. Break it down. What are three things that you went through yourself? What are three things that you went through that got you there? What are the milestones? Mm-hmm. So break it down because um, that's important as well. It's not just a, <laughs> there you are. There's milestones along the way. I think you mentioned that about the bridging as well. Yeah. You get, was that you? I mentioned that instead of going from point A to point Z, you want to build miniature bridges from A to B to B to C and sturdy bridges. Yes. So I did do, um, yeah. So, 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 so yeah, I did, I did a video on this. It might, it might be, um, yeah, what you're referencing here, but the, the point is once you refine your offer with that is that a lot of people, what they do a mistake they make is like, they go, right, I'm going to help people with this and that, and also the mindset and this, and then the fitness. And then, then they're off. They're like, I'm going to make it so valuable. Whereas, but basically what you're doing is you're building so there's, imagine there's lots of little rivers that you've got across. What you're doing there is you're building a little bridge here because you can't give it that much attention and you're building a little rickety bridge here. And yeah, you might be able to help them, but there's all these rickety bridges. You can't get fit many people on it once. It's breaking all the time. So once you've kind of refined your offer and you have taken a few people through, you then realize, right, here's the river that I can really help people cross for now. I'm going to make it a fucking six lane highway that you can drive over in a sports car. Like, and now you've got a valuable offer because people are like, right, I need to cross this river. Am I going to go to the person who's like made all these rickety bridges or the person who's literally given me a highway that I can drive over in a Ferrari? I'm going to go with them because that sounds fun and quick, you know, so that's, that's kind of like the refining process. Um, But in terms of like actually getting started, you really need to like, like you said, it's the learning, taking on your first clients is so important because you, you realize that perhaps you actually need to spend like an extra like two, three weeks in a certain place and this needs work and you need to build out this and holy shit, I didn't even think of that. Mm-hmm. And actually, we're not getting here, we're getting here. But this is way more valuable. So you just learn so much and with, it helps with your positioning. You need to do it. You just need to do it. Have an idea. Don't be um, you know, so attached to it. Have an idea of where you want to get people and then really, really over deliver. Just spend as much time as you can with these people. Give, 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 give. And you, you're going to get back so much from that because you're going to learn yeah. so much about what people are actually struggling with and things that you actually, you're like, oh yeah, I really struggled with that. I really struggled with that. And it took me ages to go overcome, but I forgot about it now because once you know something, you're like, oh yeah, well, I won't do that anymore. But y- you can exist. You can really exist with them again along that stage. And that's going to make your offer so valuable. Instead of just trying to pick something random, you want the market to determine what it is you're providing, right? Yeah. There's a guy called Balaji. He was a CTO of Coinbase. He had a fucking great saying, which is everyone's job is a CEO and the CEO's, no, everyone's boss is the CEO and the CEO and the boss, sorry, everyone's boss is a CEO and the CEO's boss is the market. Okay. Because fundamentally you have an idea with this yeah. offer, but it's going to be the market that's going to determine it. Mm. And how this hit me so fucking hard was because in the early days of OX, we were managing podcasts. So you'd manage your podcast. You know, there's loads of like um, difficulties with how much take time it takes, how it's, how difficult it is. So you're managing podcasts. And we did a, a decent job. And I got a, a hate email from a guy I would reach to. And he was like, no one gives a shit about managing podcasts. They want to grow. He was like, that's what I need. I need someone to grow the podcast. But we were growing it anyway. Mm. He was saying we were managing it. Mm. So we had to reframe it, redirect it. And said, so we grow podcasts. So yeah, we manage it. We'll take it on. We'll take we control. But we fundamentally will grow it. Mm. And that just opened the entire door, right? Because yeah, people struggle with managing, but they also struggle with growing. But growing is a $60,000 contract mm. problem. Managing it is 10000 5000 right? And that's how we've been able to determine it. And it yeah. wasn't by me. Yeah. It was by someone who literally sent me a 20 line email. And I thanked the guy every I, I actually planned to get back to him. Yeah. And I just been like, yeah, thank you so much for this. You want to take on your podcast and grow it. Yeah. You know, that's that humility, a level of humility is great. And that's what's. I know. remember when it happened. That wasn't. Too- <laughs> <laughs> I actually remember distinctly what it was. It was we were leaving Singapore. Yeah. And I got this email. And I was like, oh, well, fuck me. Because I just, you know, I was like looking at this, like going through like a lot of changes. And you're looking and you're like, oh my God, am I doing the right thing? Right. So. 
that guy might have actually, because obviously we, with our attachments to things and attachments to your business, when something comes in like that, it yeah. triggers you. Um, we don't know what intention that guy put behind that email. And in a way, it was kind of like a really loving thing to do. 100%. Um, which is interesting. And it's kind of like how we receive those things when they come in. Can we take a step back and go, right, this has come in as, can we view it just as data? Yeah. Can we do that? Um, and I think that's a real, that's a real valuable skill to stay grounded with building online or just building anything. Can you stay grounded with data? Um, that's, you need to kind of live in the, you, if you're, if you're in a visionary and you've got an idea, you need to live in the things that don't exist yet world. And then you need to come back to hard data to actually kind of help you inform and make decisions. You need both. You need both. And I think this is a lot of what I see online as well. You have like, and you know, I talk a lot about sort of vision and purpose and all this stuff. And it's really, really, really important. So a systems. <laughs> yeah. This is where it's funny, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, it goes back to numbers, like financial numbers. Mm. And that's why it's very interesting is that you can judge an entrepreneur by how much money is actually going to make, right? If you're joining on that metric yeah, versus like the impact or whatever. So when people are, you know, up in the clouds and so on and so forth, it's like, okay, with this offer, with this positioning of us growing podcasts, we're making, you know, 50k a month, right? Yeah. What can we do to get it to, to a higher level? Yeah. It's part of the visionary. It's having that reverse yeah. engineering, 100%. But you need to look at the numbers, right? Which is what most people fabricate yes. online. Or they're making it up, or they're faking it, or they're not true to it. Or it's profit, or it's, like, it's revenue when they do a 10% margin. Yeah. It's like bullshit, oh, yeah, right? Nice. Or they're like six co-founders. Yeah. Right? It's like, oh, is that kind of going on? But at the end of the day, that's where you bring people down to reality is like, look at the numbers, look at the data, look at the feedback. And that's what fundamentally what it is. It's like we were talking about in the gym. I've got another question about positioning for you, but it was like we were talking about in the gym yesterday. It's you can't hide. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, anymore, it's just visual, right? I can I can tell straight away. Yeah. Uh, you know, is the guy in the gym? Did he put in a couple of years of work, or yeah. did he just make him up? Is he on gear? Yeah. Did he, did he take a shit out of gear, and as he just trend his way there? You can't hide that, right? Yeah. <laughs> and like the guy who trends himself there and pretends that he didn't, right, and pretends it's all natural. Yeah feel like in his business as well, he's taking a few shortcuts. Yeah. He's just taking a few shortcuts here or there. There are no shortcuts. Right. There are no, the shortcuts just don't exist. Like y y shortcuts just don't exist. And when you realize this, it, y you should just give people so much peace. It's, yeah. You, you need each level. You, there's lessons in every level and you need them. You need the lessons because that's what gives you your foundations with everything you're doing. 